At the tail end of 2018, Vince, Stephanie, Shane, and Triple H all stood in the ring on Raw and promised a better product. Those assurances took a little while to get here, but we can arguably say that the past few weeks of WWE programming have been great. We've seen new faces, better angles, keep the programming monitoring along, and now some cliffhangers endings just like the ones on Monday. For the first time in a long time, fans have some positive questions before next week's Raw. Why did Batista hammer Ric Flair? Will he challenge Triple H to WrestleMania? How the hell does this guy look good for a 50 year old dude? Seriously though, it's like turning the clock back to such a ruthless aggression era. There was a time when such thrilling endings were a law for Monday nights, not just talking about a much more crowded attitude era either. As much recently in 2014, WWE's flagship was going off there with blood pumping tension and mystery. I'm MTG from MTG Network, and this is the top 10 best WWE Raw cliffhanger endings ever. Subscribe. Number 10, Triple H is a wedding crasher. Okay, so it's weird to look back at the borderline date rape and kidnapping now, but Triple H antics were part of the course of 1999 when he interrupted Stephanie McMahon's wedding with Tess and he revealed that he already brided the said billion dollar princess and shocked the world. I forgot what happened next in the story because this was the drama that lived for the moment. Stephanie tears, Vince McMahon's rage and degenerate dissatisfaction, pulling at a fast one, everybody made the angle work. This, as the norm back then, had daytime soap opera elements applied to it, and of course Tess was just sitting there all sad and alone. As Raw went off the air, viewers left wondering what it meant for Stephanie and Tess. Number 9, Vince McMahon is relieved of his duties. I love you, Pop. Trip sounded like an absolute burk when he came out with that musky twaddle the night after Money in the Bank 2011. This was huge for WWE as it was the midst of the most simulating angles in years. More than that later, and CM Punk just threw the company into chaos by winning the title 24 hours prior. On Raw, Triple H solemnly told an emotional Vince McMahon that the board directors had no longer confidence in his ability to steer the ships of Monday Night Raw. In other words, the long-standing partnership with WWE has been out to the pasture and is decided for Vince McMahon to finally take his rightful place along the pasture and walk into the sunset. Number 8, CM Punk's GTS on the Rock. Raw 1000 memorable for AJ Lee ditching Daniel Bryan at the altar to become the new Raw GM, the Brother Destruction and Degeneration X3 in the Battle of the Jobbers, and CM Punk blasting the Rock with the show ending GTS. That's what you get for boxing with God, Rocky. What a moment it was, Punk who had been flying the flagship show as WWE Champ since the year prior, suddenly turned into a jealous heel who could not stomach Dwayne's Hollywood lifestyle. This beauty of this actually brought up Punk's realistic view of the WWE system and policy, celebrities pandering for a part-time return. Number 7, Shawn Michaels turns on Hulk Hogan. Zero explanation fits this angle. Eh, at least until it was over. Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels were unlikely tag team partners when they united in the summer of 2005. Both represented different eras in the WWE. Hulk Hogan was the part of this cartoonish, hype-heavy 80s, where Shawn Michaels was his workhorse who worked for more athletic style in the 90s. Their team was never going to build to last. Amazingly, Shawn Michaels refrained from revealing his true intentions until he had beaten by Hogan at SummerSlam. After that, he extended his hand of friendship and then jabbed him right in the back with a super kick on the July 4th of Raw. Again, fans didn't know what was running through Sean's head when he did that, and then he didn't play a heel since his return in 2002. To them, he turned on Hulk Hogan for no good reason, and that made him a villain. It also meant Raw went off the air with quite a cliffhanger. Number 6, Seth Rollins Breaks the Shield on the June 2nd, 2014 opening of Raw, Batista quitting Evolution and returning to Hollywood in a story letting him seem like The Shield had actually won this fight, but no, 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 Plan B happened instead. Before Dean Ambrose could face Randy Orton in the Plan main event, Triple H revealed that he had a Plan B up his sleeve. Seconds later, Seth Rollins would hit Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose with a barrage of chair shots and hooked up with the authority. Meanwhile, fans were distraught, booing, and just flat out not giving a shit. WWE is happy with the response as it created a top heel for the company. Number 5, CM Punk's Pipe Bomb. Pipe Bomb time, alongside some notable moments of 2011, was largely submerged with the flat time to be a WWE fan. You was ashamed, grossly afraid to be a WWE fan, but then CM Punk came along and delivered some harsh truth that had some Attitude Era lovers eating at the palm of his hands. In late June, CM Punk made an unexpected appearance insulting everyone from John Cena to Stephanie McMahon and Triple H said that things would be a lot better once Vince McMahon is dead and then dropped the name Ring of Honor and finally promised that he would run down his contract, win the WWE title, and walk out of Money in the Bank with the belt. What a cliffhanger for Monday Night Raw and the shape WWE forever. Number 4 The Nexus Forms Oh, what has WWE done with these people? 
Daniel Bryan first got fired for choking Justin Roberts out with a tie, Wade Barrett was the leader of the forefront of all this, and John Cena ruined it all at SummerSlam. In early June, the group Compromise of Barrett, Brian, Skip Sheffield, Heath Slater, Darren Young, Michael Tarver, and David Otunga, and Justin Gabriel brutally assaulted John Cena referees and announcers, all leaving the Raw dead. Even the announcers, nothing was on the Raw before going off the air with this brutally attack and left us with a cliffhanger debut. Number 3 Stone Cold and Mike Tyson square off. It was a stroke of genius for Vince McMahon to draft the boxing bad boy Mike Tyson into a handful of celebrity dates between January and March of 1999. It was an even bigger success when this man booked Tyson in a tense confrontation with his own in-house rebel Stone Cold Steve Austin on the 19th of January episode of Raw. That just 24 hours after Austin won the latest Royal Rumble, it felt that something was special. In a few minutes of the show, Austin gate crashed McMahon's mainstream media in love and decided that he called McMahon the baddest man on the planet. Fans could tell a fight was brewing as soon as Austin flipped off Mike Tyson with double birds engaged as Jim Ross would be shouting Tyson and Austin, Tyson and Austin over and over again. Number 2. Flair and McMahon are partners. It's been said on numerous occasions that the invasion angle might have been a lot different if Vince had picked up some of the big name stars like Goldberg, NWO, Sting and Flair. But things did not go off like that as they had a contract with Turner Time Warner. The night following WCW's demise of Survivor Series, Flair was the first to come in, coming out as Slick Rick, disrupting Mr. McMahon, and said, The conservative is me. Wanna why? Because we're partners. What a cliffhanger to end off for all. And one way to have a dual babyface and heel owners. Number 1. Shane buys WCW. Eight months earlier, Raw had his best cliffhanger moment ever. Shane McMahon appeared on the WCW portion of the Raw slash Nitro simulcast in Panama City, Florida, and shocked the globing world that showing that he, not Vince, has purchased World Championship Wrestling as fans galore try to block out the fact that WCW's invasion would soon suck in hard for a moment when Shane showed to steal his father's thunder and, of course, his own company right under his nose. One of the best cliffhangers in WWE and World Wrestling Federation history. And that's our list. Did we leave any out? Don't forget to leave a like, share, and comment, and let us know if we missed anything. All right, I'm MTG Network. I'll see y'all later.